unlimited pressures are now available to form metals having high tensile strengths, which until this time posed tremendous problems of fabrication. These fantastic pressures are obtainable through a new process descriptively titled explosive forming. Ryan has undertaken a research program in this new field to help enable us to continue the manufacture of parts meeting the exacting requirements of modern engineering and materials. As the name suggests, the primary mechanism of this process is based on the use of explosives. These are many and varied. Of the many explosive types, Ryan has tested a number with success. These are ammonium nitrate-based dynamite, nitroglycerin-based gel dynamite, PETN sheet explosive, and Primacord PETN base. Water has been used almost exclusively as a shock transmitting medium in our tests, as it is low in cost, plentiful, and easy to work with. Satisfactory results have been obtained on all part designs tried at Ryan using a water transfer medium. Three major factors must be considered to produce a satisfactory part utilizing explosive forming. These are head of water, satisfactory vacuum between part and die, and size and placement of charge. One of the first parts produced by Ryan under this explosive forming program was a spherical cone produced from the new super alloy Rene 41. This work was done at an off-site location. The production of this part led to some amazing discoveries in that material thinning was within the standard thickness variation acceptable for sheet stock as received from the mill. This value is 10% or less of the total sheet thickness. Increase in the material hardness was less than two points on the Rockwell C scale. Both hardness and thinning are proportional to the degree and severity of the form, but are considerably less than would be expected for conventional forming methods. Parts formed explosively have been found to have negligible spring back. For some part configurations, the use of a split die is dictated. Such a die is shown being placed in a large retaining cylinder, which will support it during the explosion. In this case, both die and retaining cylinder are made of kirksite. An inspection of the completed part, which has been produced using 63 thousandths L605 as well as 63 thousandths 347, showed a maximum metal thinning of 7 thousandths of an inch. Through the use of identical conditions, we have been able to produce these parts with a dimensional variation of less than 2 thousandths of an inch. Preliminary tests conducted with a part of reduced size have enabled the semi-production of a larger part having a ball configuration. The method of containment is the same as was used on the smaller part in that the split die is contained in a retaining cylinder during the forming period. A bulged part of this type is easily formed by explosive means. To be produced conventionally, however, would require a considerable amount of tooling with many manufacturing operations and could not be produced to the dimensional accuracy or in the one piece that is desirable for this part. Operations other than bulging and drawing can be accomplished with explosive forming. Such an operation, that of flanging, is performed on this tube. The dye to be used is that of a split type. Water, the shock transmitting medium, is contained in a fibrous container in producing this part. A charge of 5 grams of PETN sheet explosive was detonated with the resultant flanged part produced.
In the first stages of the program, an above-ground tank was used on an off-site location to prove out the utility of a universal water containment system. In the production of a deep-drawn part, the material, in this case 63,000 Hastelloy X, is placed above a female die and held by a draw ring. Sheet and die are then lowered into the tank. The charge is placed in a predetermined configuration. With this particular part, a charge of 680 grams of 25% ammonium nitrate-based dynamite was used. After charge placement, the firing leads are checked for continuity and connected to the firing circuit. Inspection of the completed part indicated that the major variables had been correctly used, resulting in an acceptable part. These explosively manufactured parts, which are being produced in volume from 40 thousandths 6061 aluminum, are formed in an epoxy resin face die. This cone-shaped part is used on the engine pod of the DC-8 jetliner. In conventional manufacture, the part was made from five pieces at a cost of $131. The cost to manufacture the part explosively in one piece is only $15. The large contoured part is being prepared for explosive sizing. It has been formed to its approximate final shape conventionally using drop hammer techniques and is now to be sized explosively to within two thousandths of the die. The wire grid work above the part is for precise placement of the explosive. The part, one of the largest explosive formed at Ryan, is lowered into the forming tank to be subjected to a pressure of approximately six million pounds. To obtain good explosive form parts, we must have satisfactory vacuum between part and die. This may run from 40 millimeters of mercury to a tenth of a millimeter of mercury, depending on part and die design. Proper weight of charge, which may vary from a few grams to many hundred grams of explosive. Correct placement of explosive charge. Correct amount of water above part. The early stages of the investigative program confirmed the feasibility of the universal water containment system, which is now in use on the Ryan premises. Further tests have proven that when the major variables are properly determined and applied, explosive forming becomes an invaluable tool for the production of aircraft and missile parts.